Okay. Hey, we're live. All right. Cami here. And what I want to do is I want to talk about herbal oils with you. And I want to talk about uh, three herbal infused oils that will change your apothecary forever, will change the effectiveness of your apothecary forever. And these are three herbal oils that play a central role in my personal apothecary, in my students' apothecaries, uh, in my clinical practice that I've had since 1991. And there are three underused herbs. I mean, so like a lot of people are making calendula oil and St. John's wort oil is just getting a lot of um, fanfare right now, which is so awesome to see so many people making calendula and St. John's wort oil. It's just feels like a new day or it feels to me like herbal oils are finally kind of really making it into what that we know that that we really need to be paying attention to them as as a main part of our apothecary like elderberry syrup like turmeric milk or whatever you know so these are three underused herbal oils that play a central role and so i'm just going to do some show and tell with you okay are you ready are you into it okay so there's three of them and the first one is again it's one that not isn't isn't really that talked about that much and so again we're not talking about essential oils okay we're talking about herbal infused oils that you make in your own kitchen Okay, so, and oh, okay, I'm gonna put a link below. Oh, I gotta do that. I'm doing a free herbal oil workshop right now um, that is really good. Like I'm going for it. I'm answering questions. I'm doing really in-depth teaching. Um, so when I'm done shooting this video, I'm gonna put it in the link and you can get into that free workshop for the next, I think it's up for about five more days, but it's definitely, it's kind of old school, little known oil making techniques that I'm not seeing online that is gonna, I'm really putting it out there to help up level, upgrade our oil making projects. And when you upgrade your oil, you upgrade your salve and your lip balm and your lotion and their body butter and all the things, right? All the body care things get upgraded when you really learn how to make a better herbal infused oil. Okay, so the first oil that I want to share you with you is, this is hops oil. Humulus lupulus. This is hops. And we make the oil with the strobiles, the flowering strobiles. And this oil, it's really, um, again, it's not a lot of people talk about it, but it is an amazing oil for, oh my gosh, for tight spasming muscles, leg muscle cramps, you know, like when you have a leg muscle tighten up on you and you just can't like, ah, like that kind of thing. But specifically, this is my go-to oil for menstrual cramps. So if you know somebody that deals with, you know, bad menstrual cramps or, you know, low backache, belly ache cramps, um, what you do is you put this on and you put a, um, a, you know, a warm covering over the top, like a heating pad. You put the oil on your low belly or your low back and you, then you just let it go to work. This is not the kind of oil that you put on and then go out. This is this oil brings you down. It like calms you down. It loosens up your muscles. It's very relaxing. It can put you to sleep. And you use it when you're like, wow, I'm having really bad cramps. I need to take it easy, right? I need to slow down and just, whew. And so you put it on, you put that heating pad on and you lay down and you let it work and you let it relax your muscles. And the thing is, is that muscles cramp when they're tight, right? And once you start to relax the muscles, then the pain starts to dissipate, right? So hops oil, amazing, okay? All right, my second, um, <laughs> I'm just looking in the chat to see. So if you have made herbal infused oils, type in the chat. I want to know if you're already making them, if you're just starting out, what's your favorite ones that you're making work and working with. Um, today, I'm trying to give you some, some that aren't talked about as much. Uh, so yeah. Okay. So hops. All right. The second one is ginger. Okay. Ginger infused. Again, we're not talking about essential oils. Okay. We're talking about herbal infused oils that you make in your kitchen. So I carry my ginger oil in these little spray pump bottles. Can you see that? And 
I give these away. This is, I mean, this oil is incredible. And so um, Smell Wellness Mama says, I'm just starting out and I'm so excited to learn more. Okay, so make sure you go over to um, CamiMcBride.com, click the link in my profile, and there'll be a link for the free herbal oils workshop that's happening for about the next five days. And it is in depth. It's the best herbal oil tutorial that you will find anywhere. Um, <laughs> All the YouTube herbal oil making just comes up short, you know. Um, so Earth and Yourself says, I've been making your oils per your method for a few years already. I adore you. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> I like being adored. Um, but yeah, so I am, again, I've been teaching how to make these oils. I, I've been refining the art of herbal oil making for 34 years. When I first got interested in holistic health, I got into massage school, herb school, and yoga school all at the same time, like in 1987. Okay. And then I went to I went to herb school and Rosemary Gladstar said, if you can't put it on your skin, don't eat it. And I said, okay. And then I went to massage school and everybody was slathering all this just crap petroleum oil on our skin. And I went, okay. And so I married those two worlds early on. And so I have just been focusing on this oil world for a long time. And um, seriously, if you just YouTube herbal oil, don't just don't even do it. I have one of my students last year that did that. She she watched all every YouTube uh, video on herbal oils. And she said she just had a headache. She was so confused. So what I've done is really refine the process, put in all the framework so you understand why you you do what you do and why. And, and if you use fresh or dry plant, the energetics of your carrier oil, like all the things, right? So go over and get into my free herbal oil workshop that's happening right now. But anyway, my second oil is ginger. So this oil is so, it's anti-inflammatory, it's rubefacient, it brings circulation. It brings, um, so Coco saying I'm making Brahmi oil. Ameriposa is saying I haven't really yet, um, except for culinary oils, that's good. And Pandora is saying she's waiting to get enough in her garden. So I just want to let you know is that you do not have to grow herbs to make excellent high quality herbal oils. A lot of people kind of have that feeling like, well, I got to grow them, you know? No, you don't. You Some herbs actually do not lend themselves to being made with fresh plant. Like you basically you can't make them with fresh plants, okay? Or they mold. So you can make superb oils with dried plant. So that's the thing. There's some plants that like to be made with dried plant. There's some that make like to be fresh. There's some that you can do in both camps. Um, Jackie's saying, I can't learn, wait to learn more. Okay, go over to cammymcbride.com, click the link in the profile. The very first box in the link in the profile is, um, it links that you can enter your email and get into this very in-depth free workshop on oil making that's more comprehensive than anywhere, anything you will find anywhere else, guaranteed. <laughs> um, so yeah, Pandora, you don't have to be growing your herbs. And in fact, some of the oils that we make, like ginger, they don't do well when you use fresh herb. You really do need dried plant with it, okay? So yeah. All right. Um, so ginger, it's um, it's incredible for if you if for anybody that has a kind of any kind of pain or stiffness in the joints, like some people, they wake up in the morning and the joints don't quite, you know, get going quick enough. Um, achiness, stiffness, um, just inflammation, pain, especially joint pain. So that's why I give it in these little spray bottles. You can just put it right on whatever joint you're, you know, having trouble with, you know, if you work on the computer a lot and your, your wrists are, are getting yanked, right? You can, you can do this and just rub it into your joints. And it's amazing. The ginger oil is incredible. It warms up the area, brings in circulation and the body starts to get back into that area and get it moving. Okay. So that's what I use. Um, and so Ayla, she was saying, do you use fresh ginger to infuse the oil? So that's the thing is that if you go over to my link at Cami McBride, uh, I'm doing a free workshop right now. And I talk about how to make herbs, uh, oils with fresh plants and then oils with dried plants and what the considerations are for that. Because ginger um, really doesn't do that well as an herbal infused oil. You just don't extract as much of the constituents when you use a fresh plant. So that's one of the things. When you, when you, um, that I really deal with a lot is that's one of the frameworks that you have to understand. What are the questions? There's like five or six questions that you have to ask 
um, before, you know, like sh that help you decide if you're going to make an oil with a fresh or dried plant. Okay. So let's see. <laughs> Mariposa, if I'm on your mailing list, is that where it's at? Um, I would go to the, the uh, I, um, is that, let's see. Yeah, if you're, if what you can do is you can go to cammymcbride.com. So my website is cammymcbride.com. And then there's like a link where you can sign up for my newsletter. And if you sign up for my newsletter, then I email you, uh, I can email you this, this free workshop. But look in your spam because I end up, in spam all the time. Just look in there. Okay. So yeah, I, I'll, uh, hold up. you, you can, um, you definitely want to use dried plant when you make your ginger oil. Okay. All right. So I'm just looking over here. I'm, I can see the comments on the screen over here. Okay. So we've talked about hops oil. Look at that. You can't, you can't buy hops oil. Like nobody's really selling it. And this is, this is, high quality oil. And then the second oil that I've talked about is really good ginger oil for your joints. And the third oil, so I'm talking today about three herbal infused oils that change the effectiveness of your home apothecary forever. And that is, and again, type in the chat. I want to know. So are you making herbal oils? Do you want to be making them? Are you already making them? Which ones are you making? What's holding you back? Um, just anything. If you have any questions about any of it uh, around herbal oils, let me know. Like I just answered that one about how you don't need fresh herbs. Um, okay. So the third oil is a more popular oil. It's one that a lot of people know of. It's not like hops that a lot of people that you can't buy. Um, <laughs> okay. So, and if you're on Facebook, I will t put the link in the chat after I'm done here. Okay. So the third oil is comfrey oil and your comfrey oil, it's, it's black. It's, it literally is like, it's, it's, it's black and it should be black. And it's, it's a dark, dark, dark. Um, so Becky's saying, I've learned a lot from you, but hops and ginger is new. Yeah, yeah, I know. I have a lot of oils up my sleeve. Um, made my first calendula oil using the video in your herbal kitchen class. It's beautiful. Good. All right, Jen, that's great. Yeah, the idea is to just get, get started. So Terry's saying, do I use fresh or dried? With the hops oil, you need to use dry. The, 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 oil, the, the um, plant needs to be dried there. I can see the... I can see the comments better. Sorry. I have so many herbs. I'm just a little afraid because I don't know what oil if use them with what herb. I know. I know. Get, go into my free workshop. It's overwhelming. There's so many carrier oils. There's so many herbs, fresh or dried, which carrier oil, how to pair them. It's a big wide world. But once you get a few frameworks in place, it all kind of opens up. Like some of the people are commenting on here. They've gone through my course and now it's just, you know. And so 21 Lucia is saying, yes, the ginger oil. I mix ginger with dried arnica and cayenne pepper for my joints. That is a great oil. That's a great joint oil. And I do that also. I mix ginger and cayenne together. But today I just wanted to talk about single oils. Um, so, you know, to, so we don't get overwhelmed. Okay, so comfrey oil. Let's talk about comfrey oil. So comfrey oil is incredible. And comfrey oil, I see way too many pictures of people making plant with fresh comfrey oil. Do not make your, <laughs> um, do not make your comfrey oil with fresh plant. Just, just don't. Okay. Just trust me. <laughs> Again, I've been, I've been making oils for 34 years. I started when hardly anybody was teaching. I made every mistake in the book, including a lot of moldy comfrey oil. So, um, and so the contraindication of comfries, comfries, you don't use it on deep wounds or puncture wounds or anything that's deep because it heals up the skin so quickly. OK, so you can use the comfrey oil on very superficial scrapes and scratches if the skin is open, but not anything that's any deeper than that. So that is the contraindication for comfrey. And so for comfrey. And so Jen um, is saying hops oil, would it have implications for people with celiac? You know, it's an, we're applying we're applying it topically. So I doubt it. But everybody's different. And so you can always do these little spot tests, you know, you can just do like a little bit on your body and, um, and, and see what your response is to it. But I have never heard of that. And it's again, it's a topical use, you're not taking it internally. 
So comfrey is used, your dark comfrey oil that you make with dried plant, which you can learn in my free workshop over and you can get on my email list at cami uh, mcbride.com. You can get on my email list and I'll send it to you or I'll post it in the Facebook link or you can go over to Instagram and it's over there. But you use comfrey for any story where it's like, I fell off is in the story. <laughs> so I have a hundreds of comfrey success story, stories, like somebody I knew that fell off a tractor, somebody they felt, you know, it's not for when things are broke, you know, when, when, when the skin is broken through and bones are sticking out, things like that. No, but <laughs> um, what the comfrey does is it speeds up the regeneration of damaged tissue, you know? Um, so anytime where there's um, bruises and, or contusions or sprains or strains, pain, inflammation, swelling, joint swelling, um, what it does is it's regenerative to the connective tissue. And it's the, t the connective tissue is the tissue that's in the tendons and the ligaments, okay? That help deliver um, blood to all the tissues. So if you can regenerate the connective tissue, then it helps the body to heal itself. Okay. Um, can you use the comfrey oil on acne? When you use an infused oil on acne really depends on the stage of the acne. I don't ever use herbal oils on the beginning of acne. You can use comfrey oil when that, when the, uh, when it's scabbed up and it's healing over and you to pre help prevent scarring from the inflammation and the infection. Um, so the thing is the comfrey, like if you sprain your ankle. So I have a student that just recently sent me a testimonial. She, um, her 1,560 pound horse stepped on her. And this testimonial is actually over on my YouTube channel. Um, her, she said her horse danced on her ankle, her 1,500 pound horse. She used the comfrey oil. She still had the injury, but the comfrey oil reduced the brought her pain from an eight down to two and reduced the inflammation so that the body could start healing quickly. And this is what I have seen hundreds of times is comfrey. You know, you're in pain, it's throbbing, it hurts. It's like you fell down or you strained or you sprained, but then you apply the comfrey oil lavishly. That's why it's really important to make it yourself because you have to have a lot. If you really do injure yourself, you need a lot of oil and you basically just soak that injury in the oil for a couple hours and the pain and everything reduces. Okay. Oh yeah. And so, yeah. So Valerie's saying, would that work for severe back pain? You know, you always in holistic health, we always want to get to the root cause, you know, like what's, what's the, what's the pain from and helping to, you know, eliminate that or, you know, heal that. But your, um, your comfrey oil, your ginger oil, St. John's wort oil, Arnica are the oils we go to for back pain. Okay. Okay. Kate Jelly saying, I have a broken shoulder. How long till I can use comfrey oil after? How long till I can use comfrey oil after I make it? So once you make it, you can use it. Like once it's ready, you can use it right away. Can you write a book about the oils? Um, I, I can't write, a, I, I don't have a book, but I have a course where I have put everything into one spot. And I'm gonna put that link in here right now so that you can check it out. Because it's amazing, there's there's not um, there's not a book really written on all the details. Okay, so where was I? Okay, so comfrey, right? So comfrey, your, your bruises. Your, so I have, oh my gosh, one time I was, at a um, ancestral skills camp with my son and I was walking through the field and I was weaving a basket while I was walking. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. And I stepped in a gopher hole and one minute I was smiling and everything was beautiful. And then the next minute I was on my back screaming at the top of my lungs because I went deep into the hole and just my ankle just went it was not just a, a sprain. It was like, wow. And I was, it was so painful so painful oh my gosh that night we were way in the bush and it was the end of the day and we couldn't get out it was too late to get out we were we were too far in and so i laid that night and if the sheet touched my toe 
it sent rippling pain up through my whole body. My foot could not touch anything. It was, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, so, um, so the next morning I got out and I was in so much pain. I was just, it was unbelievable how much pain I was in. And so I got home, I walked in the door and I immediately got my mix of comfrey and St. John's wort. I put it into a foot basin. I put like a quart in a foot basin and I started soaking my foot in there and the pain within an hour just almost went completely away. The inflammation went from a 10 to like a three. It was incredible, you know? And so I just can't tell you how amazing your comfrey oil is. Okay. So that's pretty much, those are the three oils I wanted to share with you. And let's see if you have any questions. So I've, we talked about comfrey, ginger, and hops. And so again, these are oils that aren't so much as popular, popular, and they really are, they really, really help you. And they're inexpensive to make. You can make them in your own kitchen. Once you get kind of the frameworks uh, for how to do it. And uh, I'm just telling you, just don't go fishing around on, on YouTube. I'm telling you, you will go insane, partially insane. Nobody tells you why everybody is just full of do this, do this, do this, how, how to, but nobody tells you why to do what. And that's what I'm all about is the big why behind the choice that you make with your carrier oil, fresh or dried plant, um, which method you make your, your oil with so that you can really make the best oil possible. That it, Because what we're going for is, first of all, shelf life, right? You're like, here, I made this really wonderful oil for you. I'm not sure. Like, I've had a couple batches go bad, but some of them are good. I don't know why. I hope this one lasts. Like, no, you want to be 100% sure that you are making the, the shelf, the, the herbal infused oil that has the best shelf oil that you can trust in. Right. And then you just, you know, the other thing is that the herbs are really for, forgiving. You can make an herbal oil and it can be like 70% effective and you can still get really good results. But don't you want like 100% like, okay, I know I'm giving an oil that's like got 100% of efficacy so that my loved one will get the best um, results from it. So go over to my free workshop and I will get you started on that process. So let me look at the comments. Is the ginger oil made like you make lavender oil? No, the ginger oil is, um, if you're in the free workshop, the ginger oil, I make it similar to how I make calendula oil. Okay. I just want, is this place where it says get the online course Mariposa? I'm going to, um, send you as soon as I get off of here, I'm going to message you. Okay. <laughs> And Kay saying, are these oils all dried herbs? No, there are some herbs that like to be made with fresh herbs. There are some oils that re you really need fresh herb. Like you just, they are best with fresh herb. And there are some herbs that are best made with dried plant. And then, so you have, you know, the choice of your carrier oil, or should you use fresh or dried plant? Then you have which method extracts the best because every plant is different. Some plants are just like, they put them in oil and they're like, yes, they jump into the oil and they're happy and they like lavender. But then you have some herbs, um, like the, especially the herbs we use for antifungal oils to get rid of fungus, things like oak and cedar. You put those herbs fresh into an oil or even dried and they go, what? So there's like little things that you need to do to get them to coax them into the oil. So there's a couple different layers. <laughs> um, but once you kind of, once you get the framework, it's actually very easy. So head on over to my free workshop and thanks for joining me today. And so again, we talked about hops, ginger, and our beloved comfrey. Okay, I think that's it. Kate is saying to verify, can I use the oil the day I make it if I don't have it on hand? Yeah, as, as soon as it's ready, you can use, you can make, you can use it. Okay, everybody, take care, enjoy the rest of your day.